this weekend, while I was in my prayer time, I, I was really led to think very deeply about a lot of the prayer requests that came into our church this week on Wednesday night before access. I thought about some of the things that we talked about at one accord on Friday night and I thought very deeply about you every person in this room I thought very deeply about the trauma that exists in a lot of our lives I thought very deeply about some of the great insecurities that are in this room and how a lot of us are led by our insecurities I thought about some of the bad decisions that we make the marriages that have been ruined the ones that are stressed right now I thought about a lot of the mistakes that are behind us a lot of the tears that we shed a lot of the pain that we are enduring I thought about all the things that bring us grief and sorrow all the things that we wish we can script out of our lives, things behind us, things in our life, things that we're headed to if we don't adjust. And we talk a lot about love in the body. And we talk a lot about love in our public discourse and in our Christian conferences. But you know what we don't talk enough about? Hate. but the positive side of hate because there is something that I do want you to hate because it is the bane of our existence it is the source of our greatest pain and our frustration it is this thing that has brought you the most tears the most aggravation it is the thing that has brought you the most loss the most sorrow I had to take a text message this morning from someone I love who lost two people, death in the same week. And, that, and death is the same source of all of this. And that there is something that I want us to hate as a church. I want you to hate as a son and daughter of God. Because if we don't learn to hate this, it will continue to do damage and destruction in your mind and in your heart and in your life. There is something you should hate. You should hate it with a passion. You should see it in society and hate it. You should see it on social media and hate it. You should think about this is the thing that's causing me more problems than anything else. And every time you see it, think about it or sniff it, you should hate it. Sin. That's what's killing you. We mask it like we don't want to talk about it, but listen to me. That's what's killing you. That is what that is the source of your insecurities. It is the source of why you're driven and make decisions and treat people a certain way. It is sin in you. It is the source of your mental torment, the sicknesses that are in this room in our physical bodies. It is the source of why I had to counsel one who lost two people in the same week. Sin. It is the source of all of our relationship traumas, all of our brokenness, all of our fallow fallacies and hang-ups and trauma. It is the source of all the issues we see in life, all the lies we see on social media. It is the source of everything that has been much pain and suffering. It is the source of all of our marriage trauma, our relationship trauma, our mind trauma, our heart. Let's not put it under the rug. It's sin. And I want to tell you, watch. This is in my spirit. The Lord put this in my spirit in my prayer time. That if some of us don't start hating sin, it's going to rob you of everything God wants to do in your life. You, sin is a robber. It'll rob you of relationships God wants you to build. It'll rob you of having a good marriage. It'll rob you of peace. It'll rob you of open doors. 
It'll rob you of opportunities. It'll rob you of sleep at night. Some of us don't even realize in our blindness that we're being driven by our sin nature. I'm telling you this because the next time you cry, the next time you feel frustrated, the next time you sense pride, the next time anything rises up inside of you, I just want you to know it started Genesis 3. It's because we're dealing with sin. And I want you to be aware of that. So start, you start blaming. You stop blaming everything else. I want you to start blaming sin for the destruction that it's doing. I want you to see people walking around society disconnected from God. Watch and be grieved at sin. It's what disconnected them. I want you to think about those who are lost. Those in your family who don't know Jesus. Those who won't listen to the spread of the gospel. And I want you to hate sin. That is the barrier between them and God. I want you to think about single women who keep hopping in and out of beds looking for love. And I want you to hate sin. I want you to think about men that keep abusing females. And I want you to hate sin. I want you to drive by strip clubs and hate sin. I want you to see poor people in the street and hate sin. I want you to see this foolishness on social media and hate sin. I want you to see wealthy people, famous people, and people who think they're sages who are disconnected from God and realize what they're spewing on social media is born out of foolishness because of sin. For the scripture says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You have no wisdom apart from Jesus. Some of y'all got more confidence in a celebrity than the word of God. I don't care if they got a million people on their following. The scripture says the fear of the Lord. It is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom does not begin until Jesus has conquered your heart. Atheists who are spewing lies, sin. And every tear you've shed, everything you put in our comments said, pray for me. I need guidance. I need healing. I need all that whole list, the source of all of that. See, you, you think, oh, it's just because my mother left. So you keep blaming them or my father, you keep, you keep pointing the finger at all these things. No, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to give you a new revelation. The source of all your pain, frustration, and trauma, the origin of all of it, sin. And that's why I hate it with a passion. I refuse to allow it to dominate my life. And that's why we gotta keep nailing it to the cross and keep putting it to death. And every time we smell it, see it, or come around it, we need to start hating it. When a husband hates sin, he'll treat his wife different. You know how you read that passage in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy? Y'all read that wrong. You keep putting the devil in that text. That's not proper hermeneutics. That's not the proper interpretation of that text. You need to read John in its context from the chapter before and the chapter after. The thief is bad teaching. The thief. Contextually, Now, you can put the devil in there and not preach, but contextually, the thief is things we believe that is not true. It is lies sourced by sin. Comes to do what? Steal? I want you to hate sin so bad that when you see it in you, it drives you to your knees to say, God, work this out of my heart. I want you to take sin off the leash and stop treating it like a pet. Stop treating it like something you want to own. When you feel it in your heart, in your mind, I want you to bring it to your knees and say, God, work this out of me. Pride. Work this out of me. Lust, 
Work this out of me. I got issues with brothers and sisters. Work this out of me. Work it out of me. My insecurities, work this out of me. One more area, one more area. You can't see that car on your left at the back door. It's called a blind spot. You all have them. Areas in your life when you're causing damage to others and you can't see it. Areas in your life when you're causing damage to yourself and you cannot see it. And that area causes us to think that we're good in that particular area, which is the birth of self-righteousness. So when you're mature, you start praying, God, in the areas I do not even see. <coughs> like David, watch. Search my heart, O oh Lord. And if, that means I can't see, there be any grievous ways in me. That is, God, check my blind spots. Bring them to my attention. And then keep nailing them to the cross. I felt the Holy Spirit tell me I need to tell you this this morning. You need to hate sin. And you need to blame it for the damage, the destruction it has done to humanity and is doing right now. It is the source of all humanity's troubles. Not governments. Not inequities. Not all those things are byproducts of sin. We live in a Genesis 3 world. And if you don't start seeing the world through the lens of Genesis 3, you will keep blaming things. How can I put this? You will keep trying to... You keep trying to counsel and fix cobwebs instead of dealing with a spider. The source of our issues. You're selfish because of sin. You're arrogant because of sin. You don't listen well because of sin. You like to fight and keep drama going because of sin. You lie, cheat, deceive, and steal because of sin. You emasculate men because of sin. You're afraid and you try to be controlling because you don't know how to be vulnerable because of sin. You're led by rejection because of sin. You're led by your insecurities because of sin. You don't know how to forgive because of sin. You've been abused by others because of sin. You have bad relationships because of sin. We got identity issues because of sin. We got gender issues because of sin. We got the spread of trans issues because of sin. We got people calling God a she because of sin. We got openly sinful pastors and bishops waving colored flags and calling God a female because of sin. We're trying to change the definition of marriage because of sin. We want little boys to be raised with two mothers because of sin. I don't care. I don't care. We want to redefine family because of sin. We want to keep murdering babies in the womb because of sin. And we want to keep giving ourselves a, ourselves a pass for what we don't want to deal with because that too is sin. You want your life to flourish? You need to hate. Let me say this one more time before I jump into God's word. You want your life to flourish? You want to see things change? We need to put, lift up the rug and start hating everything under it. All of it is in the same drawer. It's sin. You hold grudges because of sin. And you love offenses because of sin. Everybody close your eyes who are believers and look to heaven. Don't look at me. Because I'm obeying the spirit now. If you're looking at me, you're in disobedience. Eyes closed, heads lifted. Lift your chin. Lift. Lift to heaven. Lift. Look up. Look up. 
If you're not looking up, you're in disobedience. Look up. Lift your chin. Look up. Close your eyes. Now, disobedient. Eyes closed, head lifted. Eyes closed, head lifted. So you don't see the ceiling. Look past the ceiling into the throne room where Christ is seated at the right hand of his Father. Get a picture of him there, clothed in white, who died for you. Lord, we look to you right now in this moment. I have told them what you said. Lord, rob us of our love for sin. Exchange it now for hatred of sin. Let us hate it in our world and hate it in our hearts. And let it lead us, God, to purity and holiness and righteousness. Transformation and change. Send that down upon this house and upon everyone watching right now. In your mighty name I pray. Now, you can reject it, but if you receive it, somebody shout amen. amen. Now put your hands together like you hate sin. Somebody worship Jesus right now. The one who delivered us from sin. The Lord said, Paul said, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God. Everybody look right at me. Look. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I need to say one more thing to you. Look right at me. Everybody look. Eye contact. Thank God for counseling and therapists and family and friends and squads and gatherings, thank God for all of that. But listen to me, the ultimate remedy for sin and the deepest issues of your heart. You, Ryan and I was talking about this. We, we dumb it down, you make it such a clear. It is intimacy with the Lord. It is Christ and Christ only. I'm telling you that right now. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you that right now. The only rem listen to me, the only remedy that is lasting for the issues of your heart is deeper intimacy with Christ. A deep, intimate, personal, growing relationship with Christ. Jesus is the only lasting remedy for the issues of the human heart. I'm sorry if you've been told anything else. If you've been told anything else, it came to steal, kill, and destroy. Watch the rest. I, Jesus said, have come to give them life. And that how much? Now somebody give Christ praise while we... I, I said give him praise.